Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. Today is an exciting day. Not only are we now in 2017, but we have an unboxing for you. Yes, indeedy. This one was rushed out here. I'm, I'm telling you. First of all, a, a shout out to Maury, who, if you have watched recently, did an excellent review of a Wear. Not a Wear, I guess. It's a Tyson. Is that the operating system? Anyway, a Samsung. Samsung. I'm doing really good so far. A Samsung uh, Gear S3 watch. If you have not watched his watch review, then please do, because... You're going to need to see that one in order to understand this one. If this is what I think it is inside a can, we have never had a watch come in a metal can. Oh, think of the things I can use the can for. This is great. Wow. I can put nails in there. Um, endless possibilities. I get so excited about the things that, that come with the watch that sometimes the watch itself... Well, anyway, we're doing an unboxing of a watch in a can. And there it is. Not only is this new, but you haven't seen a watch like this before. Well, all right. Yes, you have. If you've looked in the, uh, the title already, you know that this is a plus version of a G3. Now, Let's take a look at it. From the back, you see we've got a clean glass cover on it. Um, there's the charging area, the heart rate monitor, the speakers right there, some screws, a microphone port, and a couple of buttons. Okay, what else have we got in the can? In the can, I love it. I'm going to have to start talking about these videos being uncanny, right? Uh, uncanning? Never mind. Okay, we have a uh, bag with most likely a charger, of course. And it looks like our standard um, flat cable goes with most everything type of a charger. And it's magnetically coupled. Which way do you think? Let's see. Not that way. Hello? Hmm. Wow, all right. I guess I really have to open it up. It can't be tangled too much. It seems to be a little light on the hookup. There we go, okay. Yeah, it's not the greatest in terms of strength. Kind of typical of number one on a couple of their other watches, but if you get it just right, it's going to hang in there and charge. Okay, speaking of charge, let's charge it up. Turn it on, tether it to a phone, see what it'll do. But first, what are we looking at? I don't have a whole lot to show you on this watch because it really hasn't even hit the stores yet. It's the number one G3 Plus. So it's a, a bump up to the original G3 and it offers a couple of unique features that you're about to see. These are some of the specs that go along with it that it's got in there. And of course, we'll take a look at these inside the watch. And straight from the number one uh, website, um, this is the basic information, but take a look at the languages. It's got different versions. Uh, so you got to make sure when you order this watch, who you order it from, to the country of your destination, that you get the version that has the language that um, suits your language preference. And they may not all have the same language is what I'm getting at. Oftentimes they ship them with... Uh, a standard full set of languages. It looks like this time they're coming categorized as to different areas of the world. All right, let's take a look at the watch. Okay, I've put a bit of a charge on it. I know I should follow my own advice. Wow. And uh, charge it up fully, preferably overnight, you know, get a good charge on a battery before turning it on. But I can't help myself. I want to show this thing to you because I want to play with it too. There we go. We've got our first watch face. Press and hold. <laughs> Notice it's in Chinese. That's interesting. And we've got other watch faces. We can at least show you the watch faces, I think, before we have to uh, change this. It says watch at the top. Maybe I got one of those that doesn't do English. This will be fun. Okay, we have not tethered it yet. We haven't done anything. That's a sweet one. I like that bright blue. 
There's a digital one. Here's a uh, rather elaborate analog watch. Ah, oh, yes, we've seen that cute one. Now, while this is on, let me show you something. Look at the edge of the bezel. It's edge to edge. That's one of the things that they promote about this watch, is it literally is edge to edge. Nice, huh? And back to the original. But I'm going to leave it on that pretty blue one, because I like that one. All right, let's slide off to the side. And we've got a big round circle, which includes settings. <laughs> which I'm hoping one of these is language. Goodness, I don't know. I have to do the uh, translator, I guess. Well, I'll be back once I switch it to English. Okay, I'm back. Thank goodness I have it set for English. I'm going to leave all that other part in there because I want you to see that because I want to see your reaction when I do this. You saw me press and hold and slide and blah, blah, blah. Notice it says OK now to change the watch faces. Well, what if, what if I just did that to change the watch faces? What? Yeah, just like on the uh, Gear S3, this watch supports a rotating bezel. And I can pick and choose the watch face of my dreams on the fly. Nice, huh? Well, of course, there's more to it than just that. And we're going to get into that. Let's jump in. Let's go into the apps. Sliding. There we go. I can twist the dial. And I can go through all of the possibilities. And for once, they have an English description of what they are. When you get to the end, it switches to the next page up above. Just by turning the dial one way or the other. This is a sweet watch. This is going to basically change everything for these tethering watches. And it's even supporting Siri. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Okay, we're going to go back to the main one. Where is Bluetooth? I see the icon. There it is. Let's touch it. I'm going to search for a new a device, which means I need to turn on my phone. And, uh, well, actually, if this is already on, I should be able to go into Fundoware like this and hit that thing and say Start Search. And there's some of the other watches we've been looking for. The house is full of watches, so they're all going to come up here. Do I have to go in and make sure that Bluetooth is turned on? Could be. Let's try that. Let's see. Let's go into settings. Bluetooth settings. Power is on and visibility is on. So we should be able to see it. Okay, well, we may need to first tether it, right? So again, let's go back over to Bluetooth. Search for new devices, which means I need to bring down and turn on Bluetooth, which is on. but I need to make myself visible. There we go. Now I'm visible. Now I can connect. Pairing. Okay. I'm paired. Oh, it's called an AS2. I thought it was a G3 Plus. Uh, I'm not going to let it contacts or messages. You don't need to see all that, but it is basically connected. Now when I go into my Fundoware, and notice if this isn't up, you just simply press the button, and there you go. Let's, uh, oh, 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 it automatically connected. I don't need to disconnect because just by connecting it through Bluetooth, it's connected. So I can come over here and I can say sync data, and boom, my data has been synchronized, even though it said no data to synchronize. Now, if I go to my applications, you see I have all those things. We've seen this before. This is the Fundoware tethering app. And if I install the white clock, for example, it will be put on here, or that one, or all of them, whatever you'd like. The digital clock. There, they all, they're all in there now. Now, if I'm correct, I should just be able to turn the bezel. And there that is. That's the first one. That's the, oh no, that, that came with it, right? No, no, that's the digital clock, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, there's that. The black clock. That's that one. There's that one. And that one. And what's exciting, folks, is that there's a whole bunch of new designer watch faces coming out. And there, there's a process. We haven't talked about it yet. I'll try to have a link so you can follow it. And then we'll do a video on it. But there's a process you can go through that you can set up on your phone to have additional watch faces show up in this fun do wear app. And as simple as just saying install or uninstall, you'll be able to transfer them over to your watch. And they're coming up to be pretty cool little watch faces too. So we have a full tethering watch. We have the ability to choose whatever watch face you want to with a rotating dial, including the ones that we have installed from the Fundu Wear app. Now, all of the stuff about the Fundu Wear app, calculating and tracking your steps, calculating uh, all of your other things, your heart rate, all of that is similar to what you've seen in many, many other uh, video reviews of tethering watches that use the Fundu app. So rather than bore you on that, let's let's explore the benefits and, and unique features of this particular watch. The rotating bezel, of course, is exciting. That's a lot of fun. We also want to take you to the heart rate monitor. Why spend time on the heart rate monitor, you say? Well, because there's two things. There's the basic one right here, which we can select. And then there's the continuous heart rate monitor. Now, what they're saying, I hope you can read this, is that it has this real-time heart rate monitoring feature, and it's the PixArt second-generation heart rate 8002 chip. Compared to the first generation, the motion precision increases two times. In other words, it's supposed to be more accurate, and it'll do real-time monitoring, monitoring and uh, prompting of the heart rate at any moment. So let's see how that is. Yes, of course, you can tell in my voice that I've already had my two cups of coffee. Try to do that before I give you a boring review, right? Oh, what am I doing? I'm putting it on. Yeah, you haven't seen it on. There we go. It's got that TPN kind of a band on it. It's sort of like a silicone, but not quite as stretchy. Kind of a rubbery thing. And wow, does it look nice. That is a sweet looking watch. We uh, have the heart rate thing on. We're going to hit start. And it's going to jump in and measure using this new second generation heart rate monitoring 8002 chip. Yay! I'm pumping! Yeah, 96. <laughs> uh, I swear, I'm never going to tell my doctor I do this this channel. Never. No way. Okay, now we're going to go to the ECG, they call it, which, can I just touch in the middle? No, you have to actually touch the app, I guess. Well, come on. Eh, it's not taking it. Will it take other ones? Oh, look at that. It jumps around. But it's not going into it. Power saving. ECG. Hello. Come on. Find my device. Hmm. Technical glitch here. Vibrator. Oh, yeah, it's vibrating. I feel it on my arm. Why didn't it take the other ones? Do I just have to hit harder? Yeah, you have to hit harder. Maybe there's a screensaver on it. I don't know. I don't see. Anyway, it's measuring now. I'm showing you how it's working live. Um, we'll play with that in a minute. This is that heart rate chart and you see how pretty and regular it is uh, that's not the real deal folks um, it's just a simulation I have it on a fast timeout but it is going to give us a real live uh, heart rate reading here now if I take it off if it were an actual graph of the heart it would like freak out and give me strange data well it did stop that's interesting Let's put my finger on it, see if it comes back. And the diode's not going. There it goes, it comes back. Okay, it's got a built-in detector, at least, to, to let you know whether or not it's uh, touching skin and seeing your capillaries. But the chart that you're seeing, I would not use that for any kind of medical interpretation. I wouldn't use it even if it were a real chart. Uh, that's up to your doctor. But this one is fake. It's just drawing that out. It's not my actual chart. How do I know? 
we've shown you other watches that actually do blood pressure reading, and those do give you a real chart of what it's reading in your heart rate. But what we're looking at here is that number, that tiny little number, wish it were bigger, that would be nice, that tiny little number there is your actual real-time heart rate as monitored by the PixArt second generation heart rate 8002 chip. As soon as I went away from it, it stopped. So that's something new on this one as well. We have the rotating bezel to get into all the different watch faces and when you're in the apps, go into all the different things in the apps. All right, I'm gonna go back to the first button at the top and the very first one, which is our settings. And we're gonna go in there we saw the Bluetooth settings just turns it on, basically. Your clock is where you can uh, choose the watch face, which we already did with the bezel. Turn your time synchronization on if you're tethered to your phone and your fun do wear. You'll get your time from there and your date and all that other kind of stuff. And you can have your time format in 12 or 24 hour. Seen all that stuff before. Is that the back button? Oh, that's where I can actually change it, I guess. Cancel. I'm noticing it's not quite as sensitive as I would like. Uh, sound, this is uh, ring only, your ring tones and your notification tones. Those should be the standard ones. And we're not going to bother to disconnect the music. You see it's clicking, but it's taking a little time to go back. Notification tones, same thing. Well, sliding made it go back. Our volumes, that's something we want to make sure they're all full volume, and they are. And uh, then our display. We have the annular style, and we have the four app style. I prefer these actually a lot better. And I can go through it with this wheel as well. Great, let's do that one. And what I want to do on settings when I'm in display is change my silly screen timeout to something reasonable for this video so it doesn't always blind out on us, right? Uh, brightness level is three right now, which is pretty good. It can go up, you know, so that you almost don't see the okay. Sometimes I shoot at level one. Let's do level two, make sure the brightness is about right. Yeah, because this is kind of a gold color. It looks in the video like what it looks like in real life right now. Our units can be uh, metric or imperial. I usually use Imperial, and our International is where we show you the languages. Now, this is why I was having trouble. Remember, this is like a prototype watch, so it was evaluated in China. By the way, I cleaned up the back real pretty. It looked like it was kind of gummy when we got it, but uh, it was just uh, dirt from fingerprint usage and stuff. All cleaned up. So this is not like from a, a retailer, reseller. Um, this is directly from number one, one of their prototypes. And it was all set up linked to a phone which was in Chinese, so the auto sync was on and it was stuck in Chinese. So I had to come in here with the Google Translate, which is so cool. Download the Google Translator, you can point it at something, the video is live, and I was able to follow the Chinese language instructions to get to this point to turn off auto sync so I could get to all of the languages. This watch is shipping with these uh, languages installed. Okay, short set, but you saw in the sheet that the, uh, there are different versions that support different languages. Now I can turn this on because my phone is in English and it will automatically pull the English from there. It'll automatically pull the time from there, all that kind of stuff. And apps is where you would uninstall apps. If you remember on this one, the only app that we have in our application so far is the Yahoo Weather I uh, didn't install that. It's kind of flaky how it works. Uh, you'll see it in other videos. I'm not going to waste time on it here because it's a third-party thing. Perhaps eventually we'll see more apps either from Funduware themselves or from others who have figured out how to make them accessible and usable in this watch format. But if you needed to uninstall them, that's where you could do it. You can reset the watch and about tells you about this device. And I can scroll down using this. Oh, is this so sweet? I love it. I think I found a new friend. I hereby decree all future watches from all future developers need to implement the rotating bezel. You heard it here. I have spoken. 
I have no authority, but I've spoken anyway, because it's really, really cool. Okay. <laughs> oh, I get so excited. There's our, our main page. We um, started in on our settings, and I think we've covered just about everything, haven't we? Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and turn this off. Disconnect the Bluetooth music. That would be where we would be playing the music from uh, the phone. But I want you to hear the volume. It's up all the way. And it's coming out of speakers that are right here that are going to be against your arm. So it's not terribly loud right now, but you hear that? Okay, now let's put it on. Oh, well, it's still good and loud. I thought that it'd be muffled. Okay, I'm pulling it really hard against my skin. Hey, good, we're testing it. It's coming out fine. Well, you know what? It's just above where the watch actually sits on you, so it's not going to be covered. If I covered it, it would mute it. But I guess if you got a sound and you're in a meeting or something and you needed to shut it down real quick, you could just go like that and that would make it quieter. All right. It's adequate. It's all right. Good sound. That's a high-pitched, tinkly kind of thing. So if I wanted to hear it, for me, I would go to ringtone, too. It starts out soft, and then it builds. You notice that? It kind of ramps up. Interesting. Our notification tones, we're going to do a tone one. Uh, we've all heard that one. Tone two. That's just a simple beep. You guys able to see it? It's a little bright, but tone two is selected. Tone three. Yeah. Tone four. The high-pitched little chime thing. And tone five. Wow, the bicycle bell. Barely hear that one. Ah, uh, tone one. There. It's at least audible. Oh, I think I accidentally went to tone two. All right, whatever. So those are all set, and we have looked at everything here, including the about. So Bluetooth is simple. That's where we selected and connected to there. Uh, notifications are the notifications that I've set up from the Fundoware app. When I go into my settings, notification settings, you can decide which of the apps and things that you have installed that you want to turn on or off to send notifications directly to the watch. Okay, that's what you see in that area. App download. This is the um, QR code that you need to scan in order to know uh, already that the app you're going to download, which you can get from the Google Play Store, mind you, you don't have to download it third party from where this sends you. If it sends you someplace other than the Google Play Store, just go in the Play Store and look for Fundoware, F-U-N-D-O-W-E-A-R. Download that app, install it. That's what you're going to use, and you'll have the latest version that way as well. And that's all that page. Bluetooth music, um, that's where we could play the music that was on your phone through your watch. But this is one I want to show you because the implementation of the uh, camera is different on different watches. And this is one of the fun ones where, where's our smart watch? Can, da 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 da. There we go. You're actually seeing now the image that's on my. A uh, phone here on the watch. And to take a picture, you just tap the button. It says capturing, and it actually captures. See, I moved it too quick, but it captured that moment here on the uh, on the phone. And this, the picture is actually stored on the phone. Some of the watches that tether to the fun do wear only show the button. But in this case, we get the button and we uh, get the picture. So that's awesome. All right. And that is the um, Bluetooth camera. You can do voice memos, which we always test. Greetings, everybody. We are playing with the rotating bezel, which doesn't do anything while we're recording here, of the number one G3 Plus watch. We save it. You hear my hangouts? This is our team members uh, talking. We in Just by way of 
mentioning. We have in the background uh, a, a team of people all across the world, uh, Australia, Europe, United States. Uh, they're everywhere. And, and these are the techie guys that are in charge of the pro boards. Now, I'm a member of that too. And when you have technical difficulties and you send me a comment, I usually refer you to the pro boards. And these guys are the ones who are doing all the stuff that helps you with flashing or or, or whatever you need to do to fix it or give you advice on watch faces. And yeah, it's just amazing. I'll have a link for the pro boards down there. We chat live time to time on Hangouts. And um, that's what we're hearing in the background. I forgot to mute my... Uh, my computer over there. Oh my goodness, I can hardly hear that. That's a shame. Well, maybe if you offloaded the file, uh, you'd be able to hear it louder on a computer or something, but that is like, in, in that's the lowest I've ever heard for a voice recorder type thing. Um, too bad. And I know we have the volume set six on all of them, which is the loudest possible. We go to volume, we go to multimedia, and it's up all the way. So bad implementation, guys, on the sound recorder, um, the voice memos. Themes is your basic background themes. Notice it's all black. Okay, another issue, the button, the pressing is just a little bit off on this. There's a little bit of blue, if you can see it behind here. It's just changing the theme that's behind the buttons. And there's a light blue overall. We'll leave it on that one. Alarms, all these are basic. You've seen those before. Pedometer gives you the chance to start and then track your steps from there. And then again, back on the app in your home screen, when you go home, you see your accumulated steps against the goal that you set. And I never have any success just messing with it this way. It somehow knows I'm just messing with it when I do that. I can say stop. Supposed to transmit an update and give you the percentage of all of your steps. H-band 2 is recording my movement. Now H-band is for a whole different watch. So sometimes if you have more than one watch and you have these different things all connected, you get this... Uh, you get a problem, you get interface problems. So don't recommend having more than one on your watch or on your phone, unless you have a billion watches like I do and you gotta keep them all there. <laughs> we did the individual heart rate monitoring. You've got the sleep monitor. You've got the sedentary reminder. All those are basic. They're typical of uh, tethering watches. The ECG was the real-time heart rate. Find my device is where it beeps and it vibrates or makes sound both ways when you have it tethered. The uh, power savings mode, basic power savings file manager is where you can go into your watch and see what files you have. There's the audio file that we created and it's playing right now, but it's extremely soft. Sorry about that one, but yeah, you got to know how well it is the whole watch is, right? Good, bad, and ugly. Uh, main menu, I haven't seen that one. What is it? Oh, that's the one where we have the display style, and we're in the four motion. Okay, a lot of people like to have that wake-up gesture thing turned on so that when the watch is off, there, when you twist your arm, it will light it up, and when you put it down, it turns it off. Now, the thing about this on these tethering watches, it really is just gravity sensor. You notice as long as my watch is up, it's on. The fancier um, Android kind of watches, it has a, a timeout thing. It shows you the time, and a, a couple of seconds later, it goes off. Not so on this one. And no matter what, if you have your watch on and you're doing something, I don't know what, uh, you're in there, whatever. As soon as you turn it, it goes off. So if you're doing something um, and you accidentally turn your arm, it's going to go off and go back to the watch face. Because of that, I generally don't use that feature on uh, most of the watches that I'm running with. If they're tethering watches, that's that wake-up gesture. However, if you like to have that on when you're driving or something, that's great. You have these flip things to mute incoming calls, alarms, um, shake to answer the phone call. Those are all standard on these watches as well. 
We have a photos section. There is no camera here, so and there are no files. So you have to transfer photos over if you want to see them on here because we don't have a camera. And when you're using the remote camera, the pictures are stored on the phone, not here. Okay. The vibrator we showed you, which just makes the phone vibrate. Here, you feel that? Okay, that's what's going on there. Good way to run your battery down. Your clock is your information on how you can, we already saw that, the clock faces that you can change to. Your health index. What is this one? Want to know health status? Okay, start test. Huh. Your sex, age, height, and weight. Okay. My guess is it's calculating that stuff from the data that you put in, like your BMI, maybe. This is new. I don't I haven't played with this before. Okay. Um I'm boy, I'm feeling scanned like going to the airport or something. 70%. Wow. What in the world is it doing? Do I need to wear the watch? Uh huh. We're all about to find out now. <clears throat> now, 99% done. All right, I'll put my finger over it. Maybe it really needs to have my heart rate as well to tell how stressed I am or something. I guess if I had it on my arm, it would be uh, better. BMI, 20.8, BFR percentage, and normal. And... That's coming from, uh, I'm sure, the measurements that we put in. A 39-year-old. Bad. <laughs> okay. This is really bad to be 39 if you're a millennial, right? I mean, all the clubs, you got to be 40 or younger. Hey, congratulations. We just clicked over into 2017. You're 40. Don't qualify anymore. You can't go. Um Sorry, I'm just messing with you. There you go. Heart rate is 89. Vital capacity is 30. Sub health. These are not my real data. This is the data the watch came with. This is new. I really don't have an opinion on it other than interesting is all I can say at this point. And that's the data that we're getting. That's health index. And then there's Siri, which is the same as the, uh, I have to say it slowly or my tablet will wake up. It's the same as OK. You know the next word, Google. But I don't have to say that. I just tap it. Now, it takes a while to initialize. And it's initialized right now. Okay, now you hear it coming from here. Let's try that again. What time is it in Washington, D.C.? You heard that? It's coming from the watch. So your interface for the Siri or the Google thing is directly from the watch, and the the outcome is uh, by the speaker. So you don't really need to pull your phone out if you have it tethered properly to the Fundu Wear app. And that, folks, is the wrap-up of all of the apps. Back to our watch faces, which you can switch by twisting the dial. So what makes this G3 Plus outstanding? Well... The rotating dial, like the uh, the Gear S3, right, first of all. The revised heart rate monitor, the second generation, which is supposed to be more accurate overall. Um, the Siri interface, of course, is nice. And this whole new body and measuring thingamajig health index is, is new. And it's a well-built watch. It's got that advanced heart rate monitor thing that doesn't actually... Do its thing until it knows your body is connected. So hopefully that's going to be a, a big improvement in the accuracy of the data that we get. Other than that, I would say you've got yourself a really nice tethering watch. It's attractive. It comes in silver and black from what I've seen. And in the show notes down below, as soon as some of our vendors get it, 
I'm going to put their links, their coupons, their discount pricing, everything for you. Uh, right now, I'm just whetting your appetite because I don't have a source for you. I don't. This came straight from number one. They saw that uh, that Gear S3 video with the rotating dial. They've been working on this puppy, and I think they just jumped out there and said, get this out, get everybody to know that you can get such a thing at maybe one-tenth the price. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what the pricing comes in. Definitely less than a quarter of the price of a, of a Gear S3 as a full tethering watch. It's a nice piece of equipment. I like it. I'm going to be wearing this one, playing with it. You have been watching Smart Watch Ticks and um, appreciate your subscription and your purchasing from our links down below. We'll have the best links we can get for you as soon as uh, folks get this. You'll probably see it pre-sale first. Then you'll see it flash sale. And again, we'll try to have good coupons and get you first in line if at all possible. All right. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.